that music. Party's not a part, he's a man who fights crime And we're gonna watch him fight for a minute at a time With John and Will and I guess you just rhyme It's... Bad Minute! Hello, and welcome once again to another week of Bat Minute Forever, the podcast that asks a minute? What kind of minute? Uh, regarding Joel Schumacher's Batman Forever, one minute at a time. I am one of the hosts, Niall McGowan. And here, taking you to the Hippodrome, once again, it is I, John Parker. The travel to the Hippodrome. Hippodrome. <laughs> hippodrome. <laughs> That classic tune. <laughs> that is that is Top Gun, isn't it? Because then that's Val Kilmer, so that's appropriate. Oh my God, it is Top Gun. Yeah. Holy crap, everything's connected. Yeah, there you go. We've got one in early. <laughs> uh, we're also joined this week uh, by returning guests. Hey, remember that guy you heard singing the theme song just mere seconds ago? <laughs> He's here. He's here to talk about yes. this film one minute at a time. We're joined once again by Kit Flemons. Hello, I'm uh, the rat being chased by Berlin Carter today. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for joining us once again. Oh. And that, now all the way from abroad in Germany. I am. I'm far and distant and removed from you all. <laughs> yeah, it's nowhere near it's... England. It's it's the other side of the world. Yeah. <laughs> um. <laughs> it's just miracles of technology. <laughs> the old days, you'd have had to just sit around and find other people to pause the video and <laughs> chat about it. You wouldn't be able to fit them all in a room. You have to send in, uh, send a raven to relay the messages to accumulate the podcast over a period of time. Surely you'd have... use a bat. Oh, oh. yeah. Well, yeah, actually. Oh, damn it. We should have done that those previous seasons, John. Because oh. every, every person who recorded from abroad, like when Dale Kingsmill was recording from Australia and stuff, we would send a raven and she would record a line in response to what we just said on the tape yep, recorder. Yep. And then the Raven would fly back and we'd put that line in. the. It took about seven months to record those episodes. Mm. That's why it takes so long for us to get a new season out, you see. What's yep. the airspeed of a laden Raven? Oh. Laden Raven. I like that. <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. Should we should we find out? We haven't even kicked off the episode. Who cares? Oh yeah, <laughs> about that's about that. average speed of Raven. Oh, a laden Raven. Well, the average Raven flight speed is about fifty miles per hour. Is that as the crow flies? As as <laughs> the crow flies. How fast can a crow fly? So, the larger cousins of the corvids, such as the crow and Raven, <laughs> um, walk instead of hop. Blah blah blah. Um, so a crow can actually go up to 70 miles an hour when it dives. Crows look different in this city. Oh. Well, they're grey. They're European crows. They're not what I'm used to. No, that's what you're showing off with your European crows over there. <laughs> thinking you're too good for us. <laughs> you fancy crows. Don't, can't trust them. You can't trust animals that smart. <laughs> so when they're... You know, that's what Brexit's all about, really. We want to keep our crows. <laughs> keep our crows British. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. By the time this episode comes out, n- no idea where Brexit's going to be. <laughs> it's like, maybe it's happened. Maybe it's not. <laughs> just just say, oh, well, the deadline's approaching soon. Again. And it will hold true for <laughs> all of posterity. Oh, sorry. It's Today we're recording. It's the first of Advent, isn't it? Is it? Oh, yeah, of so the original it? one. And we've got a. Is this the introduction of Robin? One of coming this up. is the first time. Yeah, we see. Uh, yeah. We see Dick Grayson. Yeah. How seasonal that we're having a Robin for, oh, for that, Advent. That's that a good point. True. When this comes out, it won't be anymore. But yeah. we didn't plan the recording around this. I'll be honest. <laughs> um, because yeah, this is minute thirty-four. Uh, minute begins with the Bruce Wayne. Uh, finish, finishing off his kind of vaguely threatening uh, conversation with Chase Meridian uh, and ends uh, a minute later with um, the uh, ring ringmaster, I guess we call him. You know, like the wrestler, the, the ringmaster, yes. Yeah, just uh, work, work in the crowd, getting things going. 
Mm. But uh, but one thing I will say, like, yeah, two weeks back, we had a conversation with Gaz Flint, who's also a friend of Kit Clemens. But we were we were puzzled as to why, when Edward Nigma drove up to the front gates of Wayne Manor, he did this like, "I'll see you soon," like this mocking lisp. And now it becomes very apparent from the opening seconds of this minute that Val Kilmer himself has a lisp because he's like, "Oh, tell me, Doctor, do you like the circus?" And it's like it's full on, like almost like <laughs> suffering succotash kind of like territory. Now I'm wondering, was Edward Nigma and Jim Carrey as a like an ad lib? Oh, because Val Kilmer apparently was like very very difficult to work with. Maybe he was actually taking the piss out of Val Kilmer by doing the lisp because <laughs> he thought it would be it would come across more pronounced in the movie, and everyone would know that he was making fun of <laughs> Bruce Wayne. Basically, I didn't even notice the lisp. <laughs> Really? Oh, no. Yeah. The, the thing is, because it's the opening. Well, he, well, he does. He finishes all like, oh, I need to get you out of those clothes and into a black dress. Yeah, that's slightly less creepy than we were expecting last week. <laughs> like, he, he finishes the sentence, yeah, as you say, saying he wants to get her into a black dress. A bit less disgusting, but still, you probably shouldn't be, you know, telling women what to wear. Oh, yeah. That's yeah. weird. That's still creepy. I watch these in, in isolation. Um, mm. Normally I watch the clips and I go and watch the film and watch the clips. But out of context, I I, <laughs> it, it, I enjoyed lacking the context so much that I, I thought I'd try and handle them on their own. So that is fun. I had no idea what was going on. He just looked in that creepy way and said, you earned the circus. <laughs> into a little black dress. And it, tell me, doctor, I this time I'd... You know, dozens of times. I thought he said Dodger. I thought Dodger. it was some creepy nickname. <laughs> like the artful Dodger. <laughs> Tell me, Dodger, do you like the circus? It's... <laughs> oh, blimey, I love it, Mr. Wayne. Yeah, <laughs> let's go to a royal circus. <laughs> it's Gotham slang for a beautiful <laughs> yeah. woman. Ah, you're, you're quite the Dodger. Because he's... The first shock was I'd completely forgotten that it's, it's Val Kilmer as Batman. So I was... He's got all of the awkwardness of Michael Keaton's Batman, but without that charm. So he's got <laughs> yeah. just the, the serial killer vibe. It's, so it's very a really creepy. threatening opening opening line, I found. Well, especially when he's telling her, like, put this on, basically. <laughs> like, oh, oh, okay, don't hurt me. Yeah. Well, that might be good for context, though, for the show, Kit. So, like, how long has it been since you've seen Batman Forever? Or have you ever seen Batman Forever? When... I was, I don't know, young, very young child. I think I might have had one of my first sort of crushes on Robin, which I now realize was a big mistake. Everybody liked Robin. Niall doesn't understand this. Robin was like the 90s hottie. This is like this revelation that Chris O'Donnell was like, oh, he was hot stuff. Like, everyone <laughs> yeah. was after this guy. It's like, that guy? Really? Him? Well, now... Yeah, now I look back, he's far too conventionally American attractive. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's was... the acceptable rebel. Like, <laughs> yeah. he's a little bit naughty. <laughs> Maybe I was also just picking up the massive, massive gay vibes coming off him in this. Mm. I mean, I had no idea until I saw this clip. Yeah, he's that very... He's coded. Very gay character. And quite quite a hit in the in the gay world, I think. Yeah, I think well, they, you know, this is a movie made by an openly gay director, and I think I've I've read like articles recently where people are talking about like the reason why some people have problems with the uh, you know this was the the author's you know um, thesis basically. The reason is that uh, people didn't like Batman Forever or have a problem with it now is because it's a film that doesn't exclusively look at characters through the male gaze it's also taking the main characters the main male characters in through the female gaze as well because there is sort of you know a lot of shots of you know bat ass and (laughs) there's a lot there's a lot of focus on the male form because obviously that's 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 what joel schumacher is interested in he's you know he's himself admitted to been like i'll make the woman look as attractive as they can i'll make the men look as attractive as they can that's just that's his idea in his head is like well everyone should look the best they possibly should if you're gonna do it at all you might as well do it across the board yeah yeah. yeah. uphill struggle in my view is val kilmer and jim carrey and trying to make them look as attractive as he could oh are you are you not into either of them then 
Val Kilmer looks like the kid from Sixth Sense. Um, <laughs> oh, no! Just... I always thought he was handsome, and now you've said that, you've really... <laughs> God, no, he freaks me out. He started like, tell me, Doctor, uh, do you see dead people? <laughs> no. I think we're going to have to sit down, Mr. Wayne. We have a lot of conversing to do. Yeah, people like Jim Carrey as well. Maybe not yeah, so much cause... here, where he's playing like the, the kind of dorky character. Hmm. He always gave me the creeps as a kid. Like, I find it really unsettling, really annoying. <laughs> I've never that, quite been able to get over it. I think you're supposed to feel that, especially well, in this movie, especially. Mm. Mm-hmm. He is a guy like you know. They always said, like the old sort of idea was that um, men attempt to be funny more than women because like as a biological thing that like well, in order to attract a mate, they have to sort of get into people, you know, get into the female good humor and stuff. And like Jim Carrey, like that's a pretty decent looking guy, from what I can tell. Seems to be like doing that to the extreme, where he's just trying way too hard to be funny all the time. <laughs> yeah, he's very sort of physical and crass humor that that I never liked. Mm. Um, a bit, just a bit like a, a stretchy, small Brian Blessed in a way, very overbearing. <laughs> oh my god, I never expected that. <laughs> I have a feeling if Jim Carrey heard that, he would take it as a compliment as well. <laughs> he does. He has the beard for it these days, too. Like you see yeah. now, he's got a big mountain man beard. <laughs> so maybe he's just, he's been working on his booming <laughs> voice. <laughs> something something I do like in this uh, in this minute though is uh, Chase's reaction to what Bruce says because her her excuse me because we're seeing yeah again we're seeing a different side of her. And it's fantastic, I think, because she's a lot more realistic and multifaceted than she initially appears. Like, she feels more alive. This, because you've only seen her, like I've been saying last week, you've only seen her in this way that she fancies Batman. She's trying to sleep with Batman. That's it. That's her character. So this shows she's a bit more, there's more going on to her. This is her in a professional context. And I like that because people do have those sides to them. You can be a, you can be into doing that kind of thing, but that's not your your total being. I still do kind of want her extended response to be like, "Excuse me, oh, I'm wearing a black dress now. You're telling me what I'm going to wear? <laughs> you, Bruce Wayne, I'll wear whatever goddamn dress I want." It is it is a bit weird that she goes along with it. I deliberately turn up in a white one just to screw him around. <laughs> yeah, we 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 get some excitement now. Mm. Because we change where, where we are. We cut to the Hippodrome. Yes. Oh, I did that joke already. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> and it's the, the Gotham Charity Circus. So I decided to look into the Hippodrome. Because I've always thought, that's a weird word. <laughs> <laughs> so it, uh, it was an ancient Grecian stadium for horse racing and chariot racing. I mean, I bet that suits Schumacher's his whole thing about designing off. I was like, oh, Grecian statues, Grecian bat yep. suits, all this stuff. So yeah, he's li- liberally going into the Hippodrome. It's like, oh, that's Grecian too. Yeah, by all means, what happened in the Hippodrome? Totally fits, because there's no reason to call it the Hippodrome, really. But um, yeah, the, and the name comes from the Greek words hippos, which is horse, Ooh. and dromos, which is course. Say so horse course. Oh, horse course. Um, of course. Yeah, it's often... It, of of course. course. It's still often used, especially in French, um, as the name for a horse race course, like a horse track, you know. Mm. Um, so I don't really know why they use it in this context where there's no relation to horses. I think it's just maybe they started putting these kind of things on the horse track when nobody was racing and they kept the design. I don't know. Mm. I can imagine, yeah, just tradition. They're just like, oh, you know, it, was a, it started becoming like, because in my mind, like a hippo drum, it's like, oh, it's just like a big stadium thing. Then mm. it's like it just became to people's heads. It's like, yeah, it's just like it's a big, whatever. It used to be this thing, and then it was just like, as long as a bi- it's a big arena, yeah. call it a hippo drum because that's yeah, it doesn't matter if it has the, the the format of the racing thing within it. But well, it's like a dashboard on your car. Mm. That, that's originally from a horse and cart, isn't it? Because it's it's to stop the mud getting kicked up. And, and landing on your lap. <laughs> I do really like this outside shot of the Hippodrome, though, because I think it looks it looks quite Tim Burton, like because it's it's got the new Gotham's fun and the lights and the playfulness, but it, there's something about it that looks like it would fit into the the last two films. That's the thing, though. That now this is the minute where it's like 
you can imagine Tim Burton as executive producer being like, ah. Oh, I would have got to do yeah. a circus. Oh man, like, <laughs> it would have been great. It's like, oh, you about Tim Burton in, in this scene? He would have been having the time of his life. <laughs> it's like, I'm, I'm just, I don't even have to bullshit. I just get that flat out. Just have a circus in the movie. But I, I like that. Um, despite Gotham's astronomical crime rate, they still managed to attract you know lots of businesses and events like this. You know, you've got a yeah, massive circus comes to town, and unlike. You know, with the real world, it where crime seems to drive business away, and um, you know, mm. start a big cycle of inequality and deprivation. Here, the crime rate goes up, and local business goes, "Yippee! We can build you know, <laughs> giant rubber ducks, and we can invite the local creepy circus, and you know, it, business booms. There's so much they can sell to the supervillains and the criminals that mm. you know, crime is actually very good for business in, in Gotham. I, well, as we all know, crime is a good oh. thing. <laughs> it's okay. I like, crime, uh, crime pays." At the, on the outside, because I do like the establishing shot, and this is one of those things I'm definitely probably reading way too much into. But you know, on one side, we see on the right hand of the Hippodrome, we see this large statue of what appears to be like a devil of some sort mm. pointing at either the water tower or at the Hippodrome itself as some sort of handy, like, you want to know where the Hippodrome is? Look up at the devil. He'll, he's pointing right at it. <laughs> but uh, I also like the fact that, like, um, I'm assuming it's a, de- it's a devil because of the, you know, the kind of horse. Horn, vaguely horn shaped kind of things on his head but I like the fact that yeah so it's like it appears to be either completely naked or is wearing something very skin tight and a very elaborate collar and I was yeah. kind of sitting at the time but like that reminds me of something and then after a while I was like it looked a bit like you know in DC it's like it's a bit like Dead Man he has that kind of look and then it landed on me I was like oh wait that is essentially the original costume for Nightwing who is oh. what Dick Grayson will become? And so it's, cool. it's like it's a devil in a very because Nightwing, had, yeah, skin tight black outfit, and then he had this big popped elaborate collar. It looks exactly like this collar. Hey, and if you can pull off a popped collar, yeah. you're pretty cool. Because this thing's like you know it's going down into the chest and everything. But it's like so I wouldn't be surprised if it's like yeah it's like because it's literally pointing us to like well this is where Robin's gonna come from. So here's a thing that looks seems to be wearing the, the Nightwing outfit. Um, Wait, Robin's coming up? Uh, uh, what? Uh, also, I noticed in the background of like in terms of Gotham light pollution, and I was thinking like, oh, maybe this is a thing. Uh, this is definitely a thing. I'm not going too much into, but because most of the buildings are in this kind of like light pinkish kind of hue, and then there's one very prominent building that's got green, and there's another one kind of like a greenish over to the left hand side. But I was kind of like. I wonder if it's supposed to be symbolic of like this is a film that's gripped, or this is a city that's gripped in fear over the threat of Two Face, who is you know half a pink face, and then but there's now there's the encroaching fear of, or the encroaching threat of the Riddler that's slowly mounting as the film goes on. So they've got one green building, and then as we see later on in the in the friggin' movie, the whole city's green because they're all everyone's got the box, everything's glowing green and stuff. They got the bat yeah. symbols, got the big question mark over the top of it, that turns green and stuff. So I was wondering oh, if it's it supposed is. to be like the beginnings of like, this is the beginning of the threat of Two-Face been overshadowed by the, the you know, uh, you know uh, outrun by the Riddler. The Riddler's then, taking over. Yeah. No, I think yeah. you're actually onto something there. Yeah. Well, again, though, it could be, you know, one of those things you go to Joel Schumacher, you're like, nah, we just like the way it looked, you know? <laughs> no. Don't question his genius. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, as we go inside the Hippodrome, we get uh, Z- Zangief uh, and his twin. <laughs> I really like how you pronounced it properly because I said for most of my life, like a lot of people, Zangief. Oh, I think that's what it was. It was, it was last season in talking about it. That was when I was like, I better say Zangief because otherwise John will give out to me. Yeah. Know. No, well, yeah. I mean, I, I, I learned it with Street Fighter 4. I think it was. And it makes perfect sense when you know. But everybody says Zangief. <laughs> I like to think, though, because as we might remember, like, the guy who played Chip Shrek was the guy who played Z- I think in the, even in the Street Fighter movie, they called him Zangief. <laughs> but uh, I wonder, like, since the death of Max Shrek, like, no, Chip's, Chip's life's just gone down the toilet. So he is actually, <laughs> ironically, this Zangief looking, or Zangief looking, um, <laughs> drummer guy's like, yeah, I'm just working for the circus now. 
put on the big multicolored mohawk, stand up and drum a thing <laughs> in the middle of the goddamn hippodrome. <laughs> Pretty sure I recognize this from Diablo or Baldur's Gate. This, this Baldur's mm-hmm. Gate, you uh, have to rescue a circus. Ooh, and it just looks it like... One? I can't remember, you know. Yeah. It just looks entirely like this, in my memory. <laughs> Everything's big and red and RPG-ish. Mm. Oh, we need a Batman is... RPG. At the end, you you kill a genie, and then all of these people sort of snap out of it and go, oh, well, back to <laughs> back to work then. <laughs> Maybe these people are entranced. These drummers are pretty pretty weird and pretty wild. Mm. And what are they? What are they supposed to be dressed as exactly? Is it? It's got like a Native American sort of vibe. But what's that got to do with the circus? Well, then, yeah, because then you got like the Roman centurion kind of headdress thing going on yeah. as well. It's like, well, I don't know, a bit, of, a bit of everything, I guess. Bit of everything. I couldn't really work it out. General, slightly uncomfortable, racist overtones. Yeah, was my mild reading. racism at the circus. <laughs> I did. I did write that down. Actually, I was like, if they are, like, if they are dressed sort of Native American. Like, I don't think they actually are Native American, so that's uncomfortable for me. <laughs> but then, yeah, they've got like a Roman sort of mascot. I don't know. Since we're talking about race and things, um, I think this scene with the with the whole setup, it's got a kind of fascistic vibe again. It looks quite imposing and scary with the drummers. It looks like a fascist rally, which I think is an interesting design choice because it made sense in the last two movies. But in this one, Gotham's portrayed a bit different. It's kind of portrayed as a bit of a... It's kind of a nice place that's getting plagued by a few annoyances. <laughs> well, even then, like, the because the Zangief-looking drummers, they are a top kind of dalsum-looking guy. Like, these giant mm. statues of these bald people. Well, that's what looked scary and fascist-like to me. Yeah, as it appears these people are literally holding them on their backs, which is, you know, if you want a sign of oppression. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's pretty much it. It's very odd. And I don't know why they went with that look for this movie, because no. nothing else in this movie. Maybe it's just to, to harken back to the previous one a little bit. As we said, this this would be a Tim Burton fever dream, this scene. So maybe well, it's to throw him a bone. Even there, like just looking at the roof, like for some reason, they seem to have put up a circusy kind of tent within the hippodrome. Um, yeah, you want to it... pretend you're in a circus tent. But it's, it's in the full on... Beetlejuice stripes, like it's like yeah, the black and white stripes. It's like if th- mm-hmm. this would be Tim Burton, be like, yep, get my get my black and white stripes up there, <laughs> get me my friggin' swirly sp- black and white spiral somewhere, get me a big spindly looking guy in <laughs> stilts or something. <laughs> yeah, and how how often has he done a circus thing for real? I suppose he didn't do Big Top Pee Wee, did he? He did the first one, did he? No. He didn't do the second one. I think I've seen interviews when he was doing Dumbo. Him and Danny DeVito were mm-hmm. both saying. Yeah, we need to stop with the circus stuff because I think it is. <laughs> I think yeah, you would have got like Batman Returns for one, then uh, Big Fish had a whole thing with circus in it, and Dumbo ah. had a whole big thing with circus in it. I'm pretty sure if you look into a lot of his other movies, there's probably going to be at least eight scenes set at the yeah, circus. Yeah, I think uh, so. And like, that's, I can imagine like he probably, I can imagine Tim Burton would have no interest in Robin really, but he'd be like, oh, but I would do it. But then what kind of version of Robin? I was supposed to be. The Marlon Wayans version of Robin is what we would have got, but like would be interesting. I don't know if Daniel Waters when he he wrote that whole oh he's like a he's a mechanic kind of kid like he's a smart smart Alex street mechanic, and then Tim Burton was like oh yeah fine he just didn't realize like you could be having a circus background don't you know Tim? <laughs> and he's like what of course he's gonna be the circus that would have been now. amazing. You do have to wonder, like, so it's only been six years since the Joker was out poisoning, and it's been three years since the Red Triangle Circus Gang were terrorizing the streets of Gotham. Why would anybody want to go to a circus in this town? Yeah, yeah. This is literally like just, with it. This is like going and watching a bunch of people dress up as your worst nightmares, essentially. <laughs> They're really trying to be like, okay... We try not to judge every circus that comes to town. Just because we had two people that look like clowns, <laughs> you know, tearing up the streets and don't killing judge a people. circus by its clowns. Yeah, so it's like, oh, I thought the Joker guy's like, well, he was only one clown, to be fair. And then the second time, I was like, oh, okay, so that was a whole circus gang. <laughs> but let's not judge a circus too harshly. You never know. Hashtag not all circuses. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. 
Maybe that's why, like, the Bruce Wayne had to donate so much money to this circus is because there was just no, there was no demand for it. Like, no one else in Gotham wanted to see it come. So Bruce is like, "I'm going to single handedly <laughs> finance this circus coming to town." I well, wanted they say to he's ask the biggest donor about that. They they said that, but then is, did they mention something about a children's hospital or something? Just for instance, Jeff Jeff Bezos recently donated how much ninety three million dollars or something, mm. and as you know, some people have pointed out that you know if he just paid taxes like you know, a decent human being should, then we wouldn't need to rely on handouts from the rich. Exactly, <laughs> and the taxes would not only leave him still insanely rich, but it would be worth more than the donation was. But part of me then thought, if he donated all ninety three million dollars to a single circus, <laughs> I'm. I know that I should feel angry at that, but I don't but. think I'd be capable of. Like, if I went to a circus that was ninety-three million dollars of just one big blowout show, be amazing. Yeah, that you, you would have to, yeah, reluctantly agree that human suffering is the cost. <laughs> um. I it's now my life's ambition to attend a ninety-three million dollar circus. <laughs> However, what could they do for that money? If uh, he paid his taxes and the money went to the American government, well, that's a bunch of clowns already. Oh, oh, hey. Hey. Satire. <laughs> <Woo. laughs> we, we like to keep it satirical on this. Yeah, like, I hear those clowns in Congress did it again today. What a bunch of clowns. <laughs> How do they keep up with the news like that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Great reference. Uh, speaking of the news, um, oh, so actually no, can we do get a couple of static shots here of the what's going on in the circus? Guy riding a ball, uh, mm. people look at it actually very kind of drag outfits. Actually, there's someone strutting around with a big cape, a huge yeah. headpiece and stuff. Um, just general circus chicanery. To be fair to Tim Burton, I think he would have had stuff that would be more memorable in his circus like it would have been stuff that instantly popped out he's like "Ooh, that's weird creepy characters yeah. yeah well i mean think about the bloody organ grinder last movie well that's the thing yeah yeah we're kind of hoping for something like that but like you do get something out of it in a later minute you get like oh that's quite distinctive but um so far it has been like the it's been the you know mohican looking uh drummers uh on top of dalsam's back uh and then yeah, just like, oh, there's a guy, I guess he dresses a bear or something on a ball? I'm not even sure what's going on there. But then we cut to uh, the, the the press entourage following Bruce Wayne in, into the circus. I have a problem with them. Really? <laughs> right. They're being hassled by, it's clearly supposed to be like the paparazzi, right? Yeah. But they're all older ladies. <laughs> have a look at them. They're all like old women. Well, that's, that's the thing, though, because the, the most prominent one, uh, we're going to be dealing with for for the next two years, John. I don't know if you re- this woman is this is a returning, mm. not a returning character, but a returning cast member. Yeah, yeah, returning uh, actress. This is Gossip Gertie, <laughs> the, the, the character created for Batman Forever, played by Elizabeth Sanders Kane. This is Bob Kane's wife, mm. uh, and people will remember her. She was in the last movie uh, as the uh, oh, he's like a frog that became a prince. Like she's <laughs> that woman. Who was then instantly asked Sean by the guy going, no, it's more like a penguin. Uh, <laughs> that so, was amazing. So now I'm kind of disappointed. Like, oh, maybe that woman became Gossip Gertie. But I kind of want that guy to still be hanging around because she could be like, a doctor? What kind of doctor? And then Bruce would be like, oh, she's, you know, psychiatrist. She's like, oh, she's like the handmaiden who became a princess. And then a guy behind her going, nah, she's more like a doctor. <laughs> just, <laughs> just stomping on her dreams once again. <laughs> she can't get Very impolite of them to be interrogating Bruce about his companion. You know? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You yes, just... yes. It's not rude at all. <laughs> you know, excuse me, what's your name? Well, it seems nope. like it's more like it's... Um, it's kind of condescending almost in a way as well. Because, like... Oh, yeah. She's coming in like, oh, so who is this woman in your arm, Bruce? Like, assuming like it's going to be like another model or some sort of vacuous you know, socialite he's picked up. And then been like, oh, she's a doctor. I'm like, a doctor? What kind of doctor? Like, oh, this is nice. She's become a doctor. It's like, it's bad. it seems like a real, I, I would be offended by that tone if I were Chase Meridian. But Yeah, yeah. And the, as you say, though, the way they're not, they're not really acknowledging her. 
No. It's all about Bruce. I know he's the the famous one, but still, you mm. could at least just speak to her once. Yeah. And to be fair to the, the Nicole Kidman, for someone who, against at, at this point of her career, would have been used to this kind of treatment because she was you know part of freaking Hollywood's hottest power couple at that point. Mm. Uh, she is doing a good job of like kind of looking a little bewildered and stuff, like because she's not used to you know having the entire fleet of Gotham's paparazzo <laughs> landing on top of her. <laughs> yes, these scary old women. <laughs> I like the uh, the small woman with the red bob who's trying yes. to write while dashing about. She's amazing. <laughs> Inspiration. I want to know what her her columns like because with notes that have been written like that it's you know, the woman was dod- dodger black dross <laughs> dodger. dross dodger and scrawled scribble her, her article's really trippy it's great <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's what my writing's like, even when I'm trying hard. It's my, so, my yeah. notes at the minute, though. That's what they look like. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, that, that woman struck me as well, because she reminded me for a second. Like, it couldn't possibly be. I thought it was um, Kitty from That 70s Show. Oh. Like, who's yeah. in, like, loads of stuff. But I was like, oh, that, that, no, she would have been a bigger actress at this point in her life. That she would have been slumming it as, like, a bit part in Batman Forever. But then again, freaking John Favreau was in the movie earlier, so... Uh, as like a no-line part, so maybe it is Kitty from that '70s show. But um, I do miss. Uh, I feel they missed the opportunity though to have like a witticism or a little jab at the paparazzi. Because I guess the fact that got the fact their name's Gossip Gertie is already a bad sign that they're kind of taking the piss yeah. out the paparazzi. But because um, there's so there's so many easy responses to that though, like you know, oh a doctor, what kind of doctor? Like Bruce or Chase could have been like, oh yeah, I'm a proctologist or something <laughs> like just. Just throw in a funny line about like what kind of thought. Like, oh yeah, I like, got uh, Bruce came to me because he burnt his hand off or something. Like, just, do you do something fun with that? But they just go like, no, 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 just move on, move on, move on. But um, so like I thought that was a slight missed opportunity, but uh, yeah, you know, so many missed opportunities in this film. Oh, quite frankly. alas. Um, I do, I do like this whole scene though. To be honest, there's stuff missing, like you say, but it, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I do. The thing they announce as well, though, I want more info on this. They announce, as we said, Bruce is the largest donor to the charity. Mm. What's the charity? <laughs> keep, keep, I know it's not keep, integral to the plot, but just keep for Gotham background Circus sake, is alive, John. It's taken such a hit, a PR hit from the freaking Joker and the Red Triangle gang. That must. That's all I can think it is. And again, I know it's not relevant to the story. Where it's dangerous territory asking for more info about things like this. It's a bit phantom menace. But just one line. I just want to know what he's donating to. Well, um, I, I'm always suspicious about millionaires donating money. I, I, I can recommend for him. Um, New York, which is an influence for Gotham, is it not? Um, it's one of oh, them. It is, yeah. Yeah, is its bat population is being decimated by white nose syndrome. Oh. Uh, so a charity helping that. Um it's also a syndrome which I believe is very common among the rich and the elite. Oh, what's, what is the uh, what's the symptoms of white nose? Is it literally like you get a white nose and then you die? Is there more to it? <laughs> Three guesses, Niall. Come on, come on. <laughs> um, the most obvious symptom would be the white fungus encircling the nose, encircling the noses of some of the bats, which has led to the name white nose syndrome. <laughs> But it's actually a collection of related symptoms, including a fungus. Um, and it's not clear how the fungus alone can cause bats to die. However, they deplete their fat reserves months before their normal emergence of hibernation and starve to death. Oh, poor things. <laughs> They're terrible people seeing Batman going around. He's just all this white fungus around his nose. <laughs> well, well, he is, he is a rich elite. <laughs> I've been also wondering what type of bat he'd be. Um, that's, a, that's, a, that's a question to ask. Like, is he just? Oh, he's just he's he's blending all the bats together. He doesn't well, care about what exact strain I, he is. I, he, I, I'd like him to work with a bat expert in one of the movies who just keeps insulting him. Like, <laughs> you don't even know anything about bats. <laughs> I've been um, I've, I've had to look at the the six types of bats that live in New York caves. Um, mm. I chose New York because I um, I'm lazy and. <laughs> It doesn't seem to be the little brown bat because that lives in crevices, but not perhaps caves. There's a big brown bat. Um, I'm ruling that out partly because 
he's not really brown, Batman. So no, um, I would the, like to see a brown outfit once. Hmm. You'd look very businesslike, I think, mm. so for his office job, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> um, there's the Indiana bat, which oddly lives in New York, but they're an endangered species, and they've got Indiana bat doesn't sound very good, Batman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> they just have like it's got like a fedora and a whip and stuff <laughs> and a scar. <laughs> It's like every time someone's outside, like trying to eat like an apple, it swoops down and goes, This belongs in a museum, and just grabs the other hand. Like, oh, god damn, Indiana bat. There's the small footed bat, the eastern pipistal, and the northern long eared bat. Um, is that is that six? The six most common this list. Yeah. Northern oh, long eared bat. Nile, you'll like that. Yeah, Ooh. so I'm thinking the northern long eared bat could be making a, a comeback with the, with the bat suits. The... Or perhaps the pipistal. Just got a great name. Yeah, they're they're cute. Those ones. That would be great though. Like after all this talk of like, oh, Robert Pattinson going for the blue and gray. If he came out with a very anatomically correct, like exactly <laughs> scientific replica of a it's one, one <laughs> particular type of bat. It's like it's like this exact genus of bat, and like yeah, that's the costume he's going to have through every movie now yeah. because it's a leaf nosed bat. Yes. Yeah, I want um, you know a, a translated appropriate Batman where he's the Fledermaus um, <laughs> which comes from the old German um, to flutter and mouse I really love you know him to face a criminal and they go who are you I am the flutter mouse <laughs> um, and then try and have his baddies keep a straight face so not even in German die Fledermaus <laughs> yeah, just <laughs> flutter flutter mouse <laughs> The terrifying flutter mouse. <laughs> um, I because, love it. One person who was definitely uh, enjoying watching uh, an out of bat suit, Bruce Wayne, uh, is Edward Nigma. Apparently, is <gasps> watching. He's watching the the circus from home. Because uh, yeah. most people who can't afford to go to the circus or won't go near a circus because they're like, I'm not risking that. Are you crazy? He and he seems he seems enraged by seeing Bruce, but also specifically when they mention he's the big donor. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess we could, you know, Bruce Wayne did not give him the additional funding for human trials. Oh, so my just... God. Wait, I didn't make that connection. Yeah, so he's like... That's oh, what it'll be. He's angry. He's like, oh, you gave money to them. You gave money to the white-nosed bat people, <laughs> but you won't <laughs> give money to me. Yeah, he spits his drink at the screen there. He's got to be drinking something hardcore, right? Like a... If it if it was uh, era appropriate, it'd be a Red Bull or something. He's I mean, up all night just, just getting just wild. It's like if you bring out Mountain Dew one more time, he's then. drinking Mountain Dew. <laughs> <laughs> I love the way in season one it was old fashions. I was mentioning every five minutes, and so now it's Mountain Dew. Would you ever attempt to make a, an old fashioned mixed with a Mountain Dew to see? Maybe you could create your own drink that <laughs> way. New fangled. Mm-hmm. New fangled. There you go. Perfect name. <laughs> new fangled. Okay, right. That's my mission. Yeah. I'm gonna develop a newfangled. The next next time Kit's on, you have we'll have the ingredients <laughs> accumulated. We'll do a vichy swag, and we all have to try the newfangled <laughs> to see what what the hell the pitch is gonna be. Yeah, unfortunately, Kit, there were no soup scenes to give you this time. Yeah. So. <laughs> there is mention of food later on, but one, the scene was called by someone, and two, it was all like charred heart of black boar. <laughs> and it's like sterno and grain alcohol straight up. It's like well. I don't think we're going to be trying that. <laughs> but, well, especially not me and Kit. Yeah, so this is like, well, I'm going to have to take one for the team. <laughs> just, <laughs> you can eat it all. Just like, eat, the, eat just yeah. all of that, like, and the champagne and the, the quail eggs on the other side. <laughs> so, like, the entire episode is just John and the guests talking and me in the background going, oh, just getting through all the food. I actually think that'd be fun. <laughs> <laughs> I like, um, we see in Enigma's in sort of house flat thing here, whatever the hell this is. He has left up the posters of Bruce. Yeah, I thought that was a weird, a weird choice that he's not taking those down. But I thought that initially because you could even have a scene of him pulling them down and ripping them up. Yeah. But I, I think in, now instead of fueling his ambitions, those posters, they're now fueling his rage. Mm. So he looks at it. It's almost like his dark side power swells within him. You know, <laughs> that that gives him the anger and the drive. Well, apparently, that is the reason. Vader has that castle on Mustafar, where you'd be like, why, why would he go back to the place that burnt him alive? And well, apparently, yeah. like they said, like, no, in the, the Rogue One like, expanded canon, is like, no, he has a viewing deck where he goes out and looks at the mountain where it happened and stuff to 
enrage him further and enhance his like enhance the dark side with him. I something? think that's a bit too silly. That's though. why I watch yeah. Question Time. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I can't watch Question Time. I just get angry and smash things. <laughs> but I, I don't like that for Vader because I I like him being there. But I think it should just be well. This is where I was reborn. Mm. This is where I was made anew. Yeah, so I don't, I don't this is his it. home. I don't mind. It's like, you know. Dark side's powered by hate, you know, it makes you, it makes your hate, makes you powerful. Yeah, but I like it. I'm like Pete the Retailer. I like it in a more grounded way of, oh, it makes you more powerful just, you know, few, few, through the fury that it grants you. Not literally, it, it enhances your actual abilities. Yeah, well, well. You know, there already is a Rogue One minute. I guess they'll be getting to that at some point. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all for that myself, but, um, I did think it was quite odd, though. Like, okay, so, you know, he's left the, the poster up. Maybe it's a load-bearing poster. We don't know. <laughs> but the fact that, because he spits whatever it is he's drinking, very powerful spits, it's like he's freaking borderline. And particularly with this movie, you're almost expecting a spittoon sound effect to come straight <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> but the fact that he, he, he spits over the the thing that's going to be the basis of his own persona, his own costume, like the one of those little Riddler toys. It's like, that's a bit... You think of anything, you'd have like a little toy of Bruce Wayne that he could spit at or something. Like, yeah, what? I didn't really get why he did that. Yeah, What's the story a... with the Zoltar he keeps? Ah, uh, I'm so glad you said that because I kept calling him that as well. <laughs> that's, that, is, that is the $10 million question. What is the deal with that? Thing? He just has it in his house. We don't know why. He just likes it. <laughs> it's later on in the movie when he shows up first as the Riddler. You're supposed to assume like, oh, he's, he's taken the derby and the jacket from that machine. But it's also just what? What is it? What did he buy this at auction? Like where? The, where the hell did this thing come from? Does that mean the machine is then naked in his house? But just the <laughs> same, he's just got a some naked torso that tells your future. Or something. That's pretty Very creepy. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I wonder if it's anatomically correct. Does it have a bottom half? <laughs> <laughs> it would be great if they had. Um, you know, we always we're talking about like oh, you know, the the box. Should maybe leave you brain dead or something, and that been like you know, or very little uh, motor functions. It would have been really creepy if it cut back to his apartment later, and he had had one of, or he had someone who had been boxed, and they were doing the little pointing to the the bulbs and stuff as a little mm. callback because it was like, yeah, he's left them like the Zoltar machine in his own flat. Like these people now are just kind of lying, you know, vegetable, and all they can do is mo- motion their fingers back and forth or something. You could have done something with that. That could have been a creepy idea, but. Yeah, yeah, that would have been cool. It never really comes back, though, does it, once it goes away the first time? <laughs> oh, I want to see the wacky uh, comedy where a bat makes a wish and ends up in Bruce Wayne's body. Let's <laughs> navigate the Gotham social scene. Oh, my God, yes. Oh, that would be perfect. At, at the very least, do one of the uh, you know strange side comics about it. What is it, mm. Elseworld? Yeah. <laughs> Bruce you already mind. have Man Bat. Yeah, man bat's a character so just do something with that thought it, navigating caves is hard now it's got to navigate the social scene of <laughs> the hoi polloi, not the hoi polloi, the, uh, you can imagine though Bruce, Bruce Wayne himself then when they when they got actually like oh he's his body's in this or his mind's in this bat yeah. he would be like no I don't want to go back <laughs> Like I'm, I've become what I wanted <laughs> I'm now a bat yeah. so. oh and that's the plot he becomes the villain <laughs> and uh, you know Alfred's like well this new bat Wayne is much more polite than Master Bruce so <laughs> maybe we should keep him like this, like this. He, he doesn't make me put up all the Christmas decorations <laughs> I also want to know what the the interior design of um, Edward Enigma's room is yeah. mm. the exact same as every 90s hacker in yes. every <laughs> film from that decade. I mean, they, they shared a love of interior of, of design. I don't, I've never seen a computers that have wires and hose pipes in this way. <laughs> <laughs> Your computer right now is not like that? <laughs> oh, I'm Before doing it wrong. Just have, have big metal cables and twisty <laughs> springs sticking out of it. No. <laughs> I'm obsessed with 90s hacker stuff. Like, I love the way in all of those movies, 
There'll be a scene. They'll be typing frantically, just nonsense, you know. And I'm in. Yeah. You have to get that phrase in every movie. I'm in. So I, I do that just when I remember my password at work after six failed attempts. I'm like, yes, I'm in. I like it. A few short years, uh, he'd be working on a Bondi Blue iMac. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Everyone had one of those except for me. I think, yeah, nowadays this, he would be doing the full on friggin' Iron Man thing of having like, oh, it's just random CGI in the air that he can move <laughs> about and stuff like that. Like, no, yeah. that makes you think if, if they had made Iron Man back in the nineties, would Tony Stark be sitting with like a, a <laughs> giant clunky computer with a million wires hanging at the back of it? There was no other option then. <laughs> I think the one, it was a different time. The one mismatching lamp at the top that he got from his hippie auntie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, you know, when he's clearly someone who puts all of his time and his money into the work. Mm. So if your hippie auntie is giving you, you know, some practical things, you take them. <laughs> you put them to good use. Does he drink that drink out of a live, laugh, love mug as well? Probably. <laughs> he'll have one of them. <laughs> For some reason, I'm just imagining, though, like, every time his aunt has come, uh, his parents come around to visit, like, oh, Christ, I have to take down all the Bruce Wayne stuff and put <laughs> up the family pictures. And, like, oh, there's that ornament mom bought me. It's just like, oh, there it is. <laughs> but then, then they're constantly, like, what's the deal with the Zoltar in the corner? Would you stop asking me about why the hell I have this? <laughs> <laughs> to be fair, I've got weird stuff sitting around me right now. Maybe not this big, <laughs> but, you know, I used to have the helmet from Halo, the game. Mm. I sold it because it was taking up too much space. <laughs> you know. it just, just wear it? No, it. well, it was a box for the games. Oh. It was the legendary edition of Halo 3, and you could put all the games inside it. Um, so that was pretty cool, but it was huge. And um, we, we cut then, though. We go back to the circus. And, and I Curry. love this. I love that guy, <laughs> the, the ringmaster there. Yeah, he's got a Tim Curry vibe. I also think he's got um, a Tim Burton vibe. Mm. I think maybe he's supposed to be like a little, like, uh, uh, Tim, he looks like you. Uh. <laughs> I was like, they already guy. got like a, a Dr. Burton in the movie later on. But like, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Keep throwing it back to Tim. Like, look, we still love you, buddy. <laughs> and he's just like in the corner like, meh. I love the guy's acting. And he hasn't been in a lot when you look him up, sadly. He was in an episode of Charmed. No. Mm -hmm. Oh, well, yeah, this is, uh, yeah, of course, they got Daniel Reichart, this, this fella. Mm. Um, one thing uh, the the revelation I heard about because yeah he's not been in much but like um, he was in something called uh, Get Real which is something I'd never heard of and apparently it was like one of those like Seventh Heaven you know early two thousands like Touched by an Angel kind of like dramedy things but yeah. it starred Anne Hathaway of course would become Catwoman and Jesse Eisenberg when they were like kids. I was like, I never heard of this. It was like, I'm assuming a lot of people would have, but it's like, yeah, before she was Anne Hathaway, Anne Hathaway used to be all like a, like a TV star. And she was in a show where she played Jesse Eisenberg's big sister. And you see oh. the, it just looks like, yeah, it's like a teenage Anne Hathaway. And like, there's a little kid, Jesse Eisenberg. It's like, it's weird. <laughs> How have I never heard of this thing? I'm assuming it would have played on Sunday afternoons on some channel over here. But uh, maybe, I don't know. We didn't get everything all the way back then. Well, oh, well, uh, Irish TV just took whatever it was coming to them. So you would have got like, yep, Seven Heaven, Touched by an Angel, Gilmore Girls, probably Get Real after that. And the only good one of them was Gilmore Girls. But um, yeah, I just thought like, that was the, you know, so she, oh, that, he was in a, an episode of a show that starred those two. I guess Jesse Eisberg also now friggin' Lex Luthor. Well, he was, he's not Lex Luthor anymore. Mm, thank God. Connected. But um, I actually like his Luther, but we're not going to go there. It'll be another was... hour of talking. Uh, nobody else does, so I'm weird. Oh, look, 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 well, that, that's one of those things. Like I, I disagree with every everything he's doing, but now I've kind of made my peace with it so much that I actually frequently quote that Lex Luthor. Yeah. So like anytime anything bad's happening, now I'm doing like, oh, we're having problems up here. <laughs> like, yeah, see, it's good. <laughs> and just like you know, like, oh, I love bringing people together. <laughs> it's, it's, it's such a it's a terrible performance, but it's like. <laughs> Uh, he is quotable, though. I'll give him that. Like He's got a lot of lines there that stick in your head. Well, I love this guy's performance. I think he just delivers things really well. Like where He, he says, we're going to see feats of unimaginable aerial skill. Yeah. And I think Batman super fans and whatnot, they, they know what's coming. Mm. Oh, yeah. Oh, you've sure. heard the Graysons. You, you know something big is going to happen. Mm. He, he does manage to sell what looks like fairly ordinary trapeze, trapeze work to me. 
<laughs> it's, it's fairly ordinary is still great trapeze work to me it's better than i could do that's that's for sure yeah mm. Um, I mean, well, actually, I'd probably do it about as well as Robin's parents at the end. But, oh, well, I'd say that. <laughs> oh, oh, too soon. Uh, too soon. <laughs> so soon that it's actually before that. Yeah. Happened. <laughs> like, before you even get into like the aerial stuff, because now with this episode is over an hour long, shall we? Shall we break now and then continue the conversation in the next episode? Yeah, I didn't realize how long this was. Niall, ask your riddle. Of course, Kit, uh, every week uh, we do a thing where uh, we ask, you know, because thematically tied into Batman Forever. Ask the guest uh, a riddle, so oh, no. uh, and then see if you can guess it. And if you can't guess it by the end of the week, you know, reveal it on the Friday. Riddle me this: I'm tall when I'm young and short when I'm old. What am I? Oh, tall when I'm young, short when I'm old. I'm too hungover even to think of a witty answer. <laughs> Oh. I don't think I've ever successfully got the riddle. Oh no, once I think I did. <laughs> uh, Told I'm young and short when I'm old. This is going to be how you know old people stoop and babies you have to carry above your heads in the flood or something. It's, it's, it's one of those that, like it's one of, like, like most riddles. The answer is like a very very simple thing. When you hear it, you're like, oh for Christ's sake! Yeah, you know, like it's one of those kind of things. Totally young and short when I'm old. It's like a, a oh. flower that wilts or cheese for some reason. <laughs> well, we'll think about it for the rest of the week, and we'll get the answer on Friday, won't we? <laughs> to Google. <laughs> we'll say to the people, people listening, don't just Google it. All right? <laughs> no, it's cheating. But we will we will depart then. We'll head off into the dark, dark night. Kit, would you like to tell people where they can uh, get in touch with you online? Have you got anything to promote? Oh, anything gosh, I've got to see through. Um, at the moment, not my accordion still in Britain, but um, you can catch my old music um, if you search for Rat Bit Kit. Um, that was the, the band I've left so far away. Hopefully I'll get it back at Christmas. But in the meantime, hey. I'm just writing since that's pretty much music for the lonely. <laughs> um, yeah, so... I feel like that was a really callous laugh there, like music for the lonely. <laughs> <laughs> In the background. So, uh, g- Google an interesting fact about nature and enrich your lives. There you go. Don't, don't worry about me. Do it. <laughs> do, do both. And come and talk to us at the Bat Minute Listener's Cave on Facebook. Buy a t-shirt on Tee Public. Uh, we've, got the, we've got the new logo one. We might have some more. Who knows by the time you hear this. And send us a tweet at Bat Minute. And we will be back on Wednesday for more Batman Forever. Next time, we're graced by the Graysons. There's applause aplenty and accolades sent up high as a bird and his brood take to the sky. But while spectators are titillated by terrifying trapeze, what suggestion does a somber socialite have for his psychiatrist's squeeze? Find out Wednesday, same bat pod, different bat minutes. Ba-da-da, ba-da-da-da-da. Da 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 da